Hello everyone and welcome back to the TV and crew today. I'm so happy because I have with me Hades, the owner of ASAP Imagination. You have a lot of things to tell us today. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Thank you for having me on and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so happy to have you here because you have a lot of things going on and very, mm. very cool projects. So why don't you tell us a couple of lines about yourself? What is that you do? Um, so within ASAP, I so when I started it, I, I literally just wanted to be a writer. I, I wanted to write mm -hmm. comics and I, I was going to write a, a book. And that's how we started. We started with one comic title, mm -hmm. well, one issue, and yeah. one book that became like a double feature uh, mm -hmm. anthology. It was a flip book. Um, okay. And it was, but they, 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 they took place in the same world and it was just incredibly dark. I wanted, you know, I love comics and I love superheroes and capes and all that kind of stuff, but I yes. wanted to tell some incredibly dark stories and that's what we mm -hmm. did with the book and the comics, okay. and it was cool. Mm -hmm. Yes, well, sci-fi and horror, they, there's yeah. a place, yes, there's a place where they meet. I have a friend that says that sci-fi doesn't have to imply horror, but it's much more fun when it does. <laughs> and I, I love, I love like, you know, growing up, you see superheroes and, and they're mm -hmm. colourful and they're great. But give me an anti-hero any day. Give me someone where it's like the line is kind of blurred for them. And mm -hmm. what we what we decided to do quite early on was to give next to none of our characters costumes, per se. You know, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we, we, we would, again, like use an implication, you know, a hoodie yeah. instead of, you know, would be pulled yes. up. Or we have one character who wears a mask at all times. You never see mm -hmm. his face. It's kind of like my tip of the hat to V for Vendetta. You know, the, the, yeah, the I was thinking of that precisely. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah. But his clothing changes. So this character's mm -hmm. called Foe. And, you know, he's a, you know, he's a great fighty kind of, you know, kind of character. But his clothing changes all the time. But his mm -hmm. face plate is always present. So we didn't yes. want to do colourful costumes. Everything's kind of quite macabre. Mm -hmm. Well, that's very innovative because normally in comics, even in cartoons, they never change their clothes. So yeah. it's something, right? It's something different to, to give to the audience. Yeah. It's very different. And, mm -hmm. and I, I, again, I just, I like the idea that, because I've had people who have said to me, well, when are we going to see his face? It's like, you know, oh, someone <laughs> said to me, what does he Your look watch. like under the mask? And, I, and I, even I went, I don't, I don't know because I haven't thought about it. I haven't yeah. thought about what the mask. I don't want to. There should be no reason to. Um, exactly. The, the identity is linked to that yeah. image. Yeah. And when we mm. were writing the book, yeah. we, we kind of, we, we, we wrote the book from, uh, so the, it's called Points of Villainy, Points of Virtue. So it's yes. like a double anthology. But POV is point of view. So we... Okay did the book as an anthology from the points of view of 16 normal people mm -hmm. in this crazy world of superheroes and terror and stuff. So it's, it's, it's seen from the lay person's point of view. Um, mm -hmm. And it plays upon fear and it plays upon things that, you know, um, kind of uh, terrifying from grand moments of like, oh my God, that thing's coming to get me to mm -hmm. a wisp just behind your ear, which actually I find more terrifying, you know. Yeah. Um, the unseen is far scarier than the seen. Um, mm -hmm. So we played with that and we played with with all of these different, different. Um, but it, it leads up, so points of villainy leads up to this moment mm -hmm. where all, like, you know, all bloody hell breaks loose on, it was set in the UK and it just, there's this moment of just pure evil that hits mm -hmm. London and, the whole city's yeah. terrorized mm -hmm. um, by these beasts and things and whispers and you know and then points of virtue looks at the moment where it picks up from the event that happens to when we're actually mm -hmm. saved by these weird golden beings of light and we're like yeah and then they all everything vanishes and then we kind of go what <laughs> what just happened you know and, and and this is it but yeah within that event i also decided to take any superhero 
that had a costume and, and was a light and bright and I and I would either kill them off or they retired. So it was a moment yeah. of just like they retired. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> no, no. No, no, I don't like this. I'm going like <laughs> you know. Um but that's what we started that's literally what we started with was a, was a book and a comic for the company. That was it. Mm -hmm. And how 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 has it evolved? How many series of comics or so have? we have ourselves so the first comic that we did was a title called messiah which i which mm -hmm. i'm writing and is still continuing okay um so we've got messiah um we've got dead of night which is about a a so he was a superhero kind of mm -hmm. and he got it, it was kind of like a mixture of like iron man and captain america but for the uk okay. and he okay. was driven insane by the event mm -hmm. And he, his, his um, family's lineage has always been a knight of the UK. So he, mm -hmm. he went insane and then grabbed loads of armor from his ancestors and is basically a medieval vigilante knight on the streets of mm -hmm. modern day. You know? That's so cool. But he's pretty mean and vicious now. And it's like, you know, he was a smile for the cameras type character and now he's mm -hmm. vicious and bloody scary so i love yeah. him um and then sister grim which um so when i was when i was writing the book with laurie hmm. laurie cunningham um so she wrote half of it with me um, we never said which half until she wrote one story and you know when you can see the potential in a character yes for her it was just a story and i would and go oh, i wish i'd have thought of this this is great yeah and that character has evolved into sister grim and we've given mm -hmm. her her own comic title. Um, then we have OPSEC, which is like our BPRD, like the Hellboy, you know, department, mm -hmm. um, which yeah. is written by uh, D.W. Howard or NEM. And it's a great, and mm -hmm. um, there's brilliant, like, supernatural cases that they have to go on. And mm -hmm. um, there's a character in there called um, Barbara, who her ability is to bring toys to life. But, oh, wow. But she's got an scary. evil an evil doll called Maisie uh, carries it, and it's just Maisie well you know she brings it to life and that's it. it's brilliant I love it it's brilliant mm -hmm. so we've got up back and then we have got person which is based upon the, the I found this mythology of a demon called person it's spelled p-u-r-s-o-n mm -hmm. and it's about a, a, a demon from hell who was trapped on earth during the event Mm. and had to okay. end up fight alongside the people that he hated so it's yes. now giving him that kind of like did I pick the wrong side <laughs> kind of thing so yeah so we've got per person messiah dead of night Opsec, sister grim uh and then we have got points of villainy points of virtue the which we take in the book and we're turning it into comics which we've already got okay. the first trilogy done mm -hmm. so those are all of ours at the moment. Wow, that's um, a lot. Hmm. Yeah, and they're all in the same shared world. Mm -hmm. So the aim is we'll start crossing over, and people will see, if you're eagle-eyed people and you're reading our comics, you will see a black and white diamond mm -hmm. hidden in plain sight sometimes. Yes. And it's, and it's on the cover of our book, but it's hugely relevant to our universe. So it's like keep an eye out for it and... and you know, we've we we we've started to leak out what it is, and you can actually physically buy it now as a thing. So we actually, mm -hmm. it's a pendant, so it's a okay. you can actually buy the pendant. So it's great. So that was our main world, and then what happened was, mm -hmm. um, I was approached by other creators mm -hmm. who were like, "Oh, we really like what you're doing. Um, we've got these characters, and because I'm a big believer in." like maintain your rights to your properties, your IPs and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Because I'd spoken to some people and they were like, we like what you're doing as a publisher. I then decided, hey, why don't I just create a second platform and mm -hmm. I'll publish for other people. So I did that and it's gone, yeah, it's gone crazy. It's like, it's it's brilliant. So we we do everything from digital distribution to print distribution so publishing mm -hmm. you fully if you sign up for us as a publisher. We do the merch. Um, we 
can help you with like editing and formatting. It's like a one-stop shop. Um, mm -hmm. but, but if people just want digital distribution, we help them with that. But then we, we you know, we, we publish books. So that the first book that we published for someone was a graphic novel, a uh, wonderful kind of um, paranormal one called Bob, a non-union psychic. <laughs> um, it's so good. And what I love about yeah. Bob and, and the character, the, the guy who created it, Lance Lusara, um, the artwork has kind of got this very cartoony, brilliant look mm -hmm. to it, but yeah. the story is fantastically dark. Yes. So I love the mixture okay. of the two worlds kind of collide. I love it. It's great, you know. Um, but yeah, so now we publish for people, whether it be comics, graphic novels, prose. So we have just. Um, I had the honour yesterday of showing one of our novelists. His book has just come out. Uh, we got it back from the printers yesterday, and, and that's called Grave Vengeance. And, mm -hmm. and it, again, it's a brilliant, like, um, kind of like horror-based book. Mm -hmm. right. And now I was thinking, because you are helping others publish their, like you're explaining, um, but in uh, under your name, do you have, like, your fixed artist or can people submit to you if they don't um, want to go themselves through the process so to speak so we we have regular artists who we work with because we've got really good relationships mm -hmm. but we're always open to speak to other artists and the thing is sometimes there might be um someone over on the any one world who might be looking for an artist or something like that and I also, in February of this year, created a, a, a different platform. So it's not for publishing, but I've created like a community online yes. called, and it's called, mm -hmm. it's called Gig, um, yes. which is Global Indie Group, uh, globalindiegroup.com, people. And <laughs> with that, it's, it's like everything a creative might need from start to finish. Mm -hmm. So you could join Gig. So you, you sign up to Gig. You could have the conception of a single idea. You could go, I've got an idea, but I'm not a writer. Yeah. Uh -huh. So you can, go, you can go into gig and you can find a writer. And if it's a comic book, you can find an artist and you can find an editor. So you get quality within your work. Uh, if money's an issue, there's crowdfunding. If you need to learn, there's a training section. If you then want to promote it, there's a bunch of, public, uh, a bunch of podcasters who are indie friendly and dare to help. Um, mm -hmm. If you want to publish it, there's a list of publishers. Of course, I'm in the list of publishers. Um, <laughs> you know, and then then you can put it out for review, and there's a list of reviewers. If it's a film, there's a list of um, film and video as well. So if you uh, mm -hmm. I've got a film script, there are some great indie film companies who can either guide you or help you or maybe take mm -hmm. on the project. But yes. it's everything under one roof. And people can join as well. So if, if someone says, hey, I'm an artist, I'd like to be on gig, you know, um, go to the website and there is a section where you can sign up as a, you know, someone who can showcase their stuff. And, and then once you do that, it will give you an email address. So you just message uh, mm -hmm. and then we can set up your profile. The other thing about gig that I always stress to people mm -hmm. is it's more of a directory. So... There is a, a membership fee to sign up to gig that keeps the bots and the spammers out because yeah. they won't sign up or pay for something. Yes. To get, you know, so that's, that keeps them out. So the other thing is if you come on and you were looking for an artist mm -hmm. and you find an artist and you agree a price with them. So let's say you want to make a comic, you agree a price. We have nothing to do with that pricing. We don't take any money off it. We don't take yeah. any percentage off the top. We are simply there to help you get your project off the ground. We will support you in that project. But when it comes to agreements and so on and so forth, we, we, we don't feel the need to wade in and say, give me part of this money. No, it's, it's for the yes. Indies. You know? Which is how normally these kind of platforms work, that they keep yeah. a commission of what you do. Yeah. And and also many times it's very confusing. You have to stick to the rules that you have to speak inside the platform. You cannot mm -hmm. have a single link. It's yeah, I'm I'm sometimes I've tried, but mm -hmm. nah, I, 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 I fucked up. There's too many restrictions 
Um, yes, yes. There's, there's, it, it, ta- it takes, it, I, it sounds really dramatic when I say this, but it's true. It does take away a lot of your like creativeness because yes. there's so many borders. Like I can't do it this way. I once yes. was working with someone on, on one of those sites and I asked him, mm-hmm. If you could just email me the link because it wasn't working, in, in, and he, he just went, I'm not allowed. And I was like, Yes. I've paid for this work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And you're not allowed to send it me in a way that I can view it. It doesn't make sense. Um, mm. So, yeah, on gig, it's, it's absolutely, you know, we, we, when you, you will see the artist profile, for example, and you will see a portfolio. But mm-hmm. if you want to contact them, the contact link takes you to them. It mm-hmm. takes you out of the site and takes you to them. And it means that you can agree it calmly and you can agree it with just them and, and you're done. Um, but by doing it through gig, everything's centralized. And you, okay. can, you can shop calmly. Um, I take nothing away from social media. It's a great tool. But if you say mm-hmm. on social media, for example, I'm looking for an artist. You're going to yeah. get hit by spam. You're going to get hit by bots. Yes, yes. You're going to get hit by a lot of people's opinions. And then before yeah. you know All it. All the experts. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you're going to, yeah, some, might, some might go, this person, they go, no, I hate him or I hate them. You know? <laughs> and then you kind of go, this, this has turned into a Jerry Springer show. I just need an artist. You know? Yes, yes. So on gig, there's no noise. There's no spam. There's no bot. And everyone who's on there, we vetted so we've made yeah. sure that the podcasts are relevant the, okay. the publishers are relevant because the thing is it's, it's multi-genre on gig obviously in over on any one world we do sci-fi and horror and thrillers and so mm-hmm. you know you couldn't come to the any one world and go i've got this wonderful romance novel it's like <laughs> doesn't fit but you can find a publisher on gig that it will fit yeah. you know or um, an artist yes. because sometimes an artist can draw anything yeah, exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, and and yeah, and, and gig was just a natural extension of the Any One World. Mm-hmm. Um, Any One World, we try and help people um, that it fits within our genres and you know stuff like that. Um, but then, like I said, gig was just a natural extension from that. But I love the platforms that we have. We've got a children's platform as well. Um, okay. You know, the way we do children's books, but from to go from like one comic and one book in and we did this was in 2020 so mm-hmm. to go from like one comic and one book to where we are today it's like i'm so yes. proud and so happy with the people that have helped me get there like i'm so lucky um with those people but yeah it's been a journey jesus yeah i can imagine and now listening to you i had a question mm. for people who don't know it you mentioned graphic novels and comics mm. Yes. What's the difference between them exactly for someone who is not in the world? So for comics, you will be looking at all what we would refer to as singles. So it's normally, you know, like normally around about 22 pages. Okay. Uh, it's in the uh, length then. Is in, yeah, 22 pages of story and then it will probably okay. continue on issue one, issue two, issue three. With graphic novels, it's often a story arc in a binded book so mm. it would have taken let's say so we do it with ours so we're going to do four issue arcs in our comics okay so issue one to four is a, is an arc it doesn't cut off at the end it's going to continue with the characters but that storyline has now come to an end okay so what we would then do is we would take those four issues we would bind them together as one story arc mm-hmm. we would put them in a paperback cover so instead of so it, it would be four issue four twenty two page becomes an eighty eight page graphic novel. You add in extras for a graphic novel, you know, uh, character art and stuff like that. So comfortably, like a hundred page graphic novel is what we're looking at okay. with a new cover, and then that's your trade. And you'll find that so obviously you know a comic book shop will stock both, but if you go to bookshops. Mm-hmm. You'll find that a lot of bookshops will stock graphic novels rather than okay. comics. You know, yeah. so it's often it's often a storyline is mm-hmm. is a graphic novel, um, of which I have many <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, as a geek. Um, but yeah, you know, um, 
comics, like I say, with indies, we get to pick our own page counts and stuff. Um, but normally it's around about 20, between 22 to 36 pages. Hmm. Okay, I understand. Yeah, because sometimes you don't know exactly that, because sometimes people even are, I don't know, on, on platforms, um, they advertise something, and I think, I'm not sure this is a graphic novel, I'm not sure this is a comic, you know, like, I, I, yeah. I was really curious to know exactly what was the difference, because I was thinking, I don't know, maybe it's that kind of format, or, you know, yeah, whatever, yeah. so... It, it's yes. it's one of those things where as a as a publisher as well. So when mm -hmm. we do things like ISBN, so ISBN your barcodes for your books. So it will automatically, you know, on on novels and anthology books, it will go on. Comics don't tend to have them because you don't okay. tend need them so much for for singles, especially as an independent. Mm -hmm. You can, but nine times out of ten you don't need them. Whereas a graphic novel, you should have an ISBN to your graphic novel. It should be on the back okay. of your book because it would be more likely to get into chain stores. So in the UK, yeah. we have like Waterstones. In the US, you've got Barnes and Noble, you know. So you, you're more likely to get a graphic novel into those places as well. Yeah, hmm, yeah. I understand. So it's more the magnitude of the, of the piece, yeah. so to speak. Yeah. Is there, now that you say that it's been a long journey, and I guess that... Mm learning everything is there something if you started all over again is there something you would change the way you have done it anything yeah. you would avoid so yeah i think for, for 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 us i think it was just a case of there's a difference between holding back on some story stuff because you want to surprise people yes and then there's this thing of holding too much back and then people don't know what you're talking about They've got yeah. no connection to your story whatsoever. And you go, but it's a surprise. But you're not giving <laughs> enough way yeah. to, 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 you know, kind of what. So when we started, there was, hmm. I think I held back too much for like the first, and it's only the first couple of months before I went, mm -hmm. what am I doing? Like, bloody idiot. Um, yeah. you know. um, <laughs> but you've got to give, it's like, it's like that balance. You've got to give enough away. Hmm. that people go oh tell me more and then yes. going i'm telling you nothing interested no <laughs> you know? it's that kind of thing, yeah. yes i understand sometimes it's difficult to um preview how people are going to behave you, you yeah. never know sometimes the audience is very unpredictable and also yeah. in this way right that you think that they are going to behave one way or react one way and it's completely the opposite. Yeah, yeah, or, yeah. or or you explain something or a project or a new, like like you said, you're going to launch a book or a graphic novel or something. And you think that they are going to understand and they don't because we all think differently, right? So yeah. I think that it's, it's a long way to get to really know and have this relationship with your audience, know yeah. what they expect, what they like, what they react to. So yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I think I think you you you're completely right there. And 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 again, luckily we learned early on. I got some you know good people around. As from mm. from day one, I've had good people around me. So we we've always been able to converse and say this isn't working. Like, what are we yeah. doing? You know, and and I think that's the other thing. And 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 I always say to people, <clears throat> like living off that experience. Mm -hmm. Um, there's there's also that thing where it's like people might talk about what they want to do and they don't do it mm -hmm. yeah so it's the same kind of tease it's like you're telling me stuff but you're not delivering me stuff so it's like yeah. find the balance you know you've got stuff but you're not telling yes. me you know so it's there's there's that that significant difference and it also how you would market it to someone you know again it's like mm. you use the tools that are around us um, and I don't think I was using the tools enough because I didn't have enough of an understanding of them, whereas yeah. I've got much more of an understanding now. You're always going to grow, but it's, mm. you know, you can get really excited and go, I've done their book. No one knows about it because I didn't do any marketing. You know, <laughs> so it's that kind of thing. Yeah. Yes, you need time to learn. It's not easy. 
exactly and, and I'm learning you know yeah. I'm learning all the time and um and it's great like I, I love it but again I, I would say that was probably my biggest downfall at the beginning yeah mm -hmm. yeah that makes me think of sometimes um I know of authors that they like start talking about their book way before they have a link to purchase or to pre-order yeah, and yeah. what I always say is that I mean it's okay to make a bit of a buzz and make noise but if you talk for too long about something people can't do anything about yet they cannot mm -hmm. pre-order they cannot see anything they cannot preview with anything yeah. they're going to forget about it they're going to get bored because it's like okay this is cool but what do I do and yeah. I think that very rarely they come twice or three times to the same thing that they have to yeah. be very very interested so you need to have something an action they can do even if it's just pre-ordering and, and yeah. knowing that at some point it will arrive so that makes me think of that too like if, if you make too much noise before they can take action that yeah. the wave is going to go down too a hundred percent and the other thing that, that one of the things that i really enjoy that sometimes we do so when we were first doing the book and Laurie and I were writing mm -hmm. it together, we were having like, we kind of had a moving deadline because life gets in the way sometimes. Yes, and, yes. Um, uh, I remember she she was, oh, it was hilarious. But so what happened was, was we, we, cut, we had this moving deadline and I was like, we need to nail this down. We need mm -hmm. to stop the moving deadline. Yes. So I, I remember sending her a message and it was like along the lines of, I've done what I've done, just deal with it. And what I've done was, <laughs> I had tweeted the book will be out in November. Uh, now you have to do it. And it was like, we've got to do it now. And she, you know, I joke, I've said this before, but she called me some names. There were some names. I can't, I can't <laughs> say those names. Very, 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 very strong worded names. Um, <laughs> but it was great. And then she was like, are you crazy? And I was like, probably. <laughs> but it's too late now. And... Yeah. <laughs> but it did, and it was great because it really kind of lit a fire under under our backsides, yeah. and we got the book out, and the book came out in November. Exactly, you have the yeah. pressure of the deadline. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and then what was great? So when we did launch the Any One World, obviously we, we the, the first book that we published for someone else's their thing mm -hmm. was Bob, but just before that we decided to launch the Any One World with an anthology, the same way we'd launched <laughs> the main world, like our world, yeah. and. We put a call out and we were like, right, it's sci-fi, horror, thriller, you, you, you know, and the book is called Perspectives and it's for charity mm -hmm. and it was for a, a condition called dyspraxia, um, which is a condition okay. that my son has. Okay. And the, the beauty, by this point, we'd kind of got it in our heads, like, let's do this, you know, we've got stuff to do, let's go. Now, I'm particularly proud of everyone involved in this, but we got from the point of advertising it yes. to the point of taking on 16 separate writers mm -hmm. wow full ed full edits full book new cover all the rest three months and it was in print wow and yeah. like the, the the like laurie is as editor-in-chief and and then and then jess who was the editor who edited 16 different people's stuff and got it back to them and you know the turnaround was just boom and yeah. the book came out and it was great and we did a we did a launch party for it and sold it and and, and it was um six and it was called perspectives and it was 16 perspectives of just these people's thoughts mm -hmm. yes uh, so not only was that in three months and that was fantastic and just amazing and i was like in awe of it but of the 16 eight of the people it was their first ever time published mm -hmm. okay so that's always an honor that's, a, that's such awesome. a great thing you know you get yeah. to see these people go i'm in print <laughs> um you know <laughs> and it's pretty you know it's, it's so nice. great yeah and it was yeah. really funny because we were like loads of us were like this is so great but this is an incredibly dark book so it's so <laughs> weird to have that mix and you go this is so great it's also evil but it's so great <laughs> um it's it like it's so much fun horror um, tends to do this <laughs> yeah yeah I, I i love i love that but again, what I then loved was people off the back of that were like, they got the bug for it then. And then they were like, right, I need to write more now. So then yeah. we've got, you know, people who, the, the, the novel who, who came out, you know, I showed him yesterday. He was one of the writers in Perspectives. He'd had, he'd had stuff out before, but, you know, it was still an honour to say, here's your book with us because of off the back of the anthology. Yes. Um, 
and it, yeah it's great and 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 this is the thing and it, again it's such a weird thing that you've got this incredibly dark book for such an incredibly good cause with incredibly great people and we laughed our way through it it's just like it's <laughs> uh, it's so great that's awesome um if if you had to tell new audience new readers which book uh should they pick the first one from yours uh, so from which our world series yeah mm -hmm. so from our world you can kind of start wherever you want because we we have self-contained stories that will leak onto the rest of the world mm -hmm. but if you want to so on our website we have a timeline of when these yes. things actually happened okay cool but yes. people can follow the timeline but it most of it start with points of villainy points of virtue whether it's in the book or comic book form you've got two options mm -hmm. now you can read it as prose or you can read it as comics now we uh, the points of villainy trilogy is out and then we are just uh, we're in the the artwork stage of the points of virtue trilogy so mm -hmm. But okay. that's like the catalyst. So that's the main point. And in the anyone world, wherever you like, because it's all different mm -hmm. people. It's this great kind of mixing pot of geniuses. I love it. Awesome. Well, I will link everything below so everyone can check everything out. So it's so lovely to talk to you, but we need to wrap up. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's pretty brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for being here. We need to, to make more of this. We have a yes. lot to talk about. A lot, yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, then, thank you so much for your time, oh, for your company. And you. I will link everything below so everything, everyone can check it out because you make an, you do an amazing job. And yeah. I can, I, yes. So um, a lot of, lot of luck and success with all your projects and keep me updated on everything, okay? Absolutely, will do. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you so much. Have a lovely day. And you, thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye.